Let's make a quick visualization for the areas of similar polygons theorem. And I'm going to use squares because it's oh, they're just so easy to understand. Well, it's just by looking at this, we can see that the relationship between the sides of these two squares, that is the big one to the little one, 3 to 2, and it should be pretty obvious we can just count them all up. And we can see that the ratio of the areas, I've got nine we squares on this side and only four there. So again, the ratio of the sides when it is squared is the ratio of the areas, three squared to two squared. Let's do some examples. And we're going to apply our theorem 11.7 here to problem number six, exercise six from your textbook. Um, the book says we're given these two figures, red and blue, and their corresponding signs, the 15 and the 20, that is, are given to us. And it's, you know, it's important to note here that there's no tick marks, but had these figures been oriented in different directions, and we would have to identify which of these particular pieces is corresponding. Uh, the author makes it really easy here, saying these two are the corresponding sides. So let's, um, well, let's get to work, shall we? I'm first going to find the ratio of the corresponding sides. And before I just jump ahead with uh, 15 to 20, I'm going to decide, you know, I better do something with that. I'm going to simplify it. And let's simplify it to 3 fourths. And we'll see why right now. Because we know that the squares, according to theorem 11.7, that the ratio of the areas is the square of the ratios of the corresponding sides. Now, had we squared the 15 and the 20, we'd have 225 to 400. That's ridiculous. And then you would you would end up with all multiplying all these big numbers unnecessarily. These two numbers, 9 and 16, will be relatively prime. Um, relatively prime in that they have no common factors other than one. So there that's a that's a ratio that's going to be good to work with. So let's um, well, let's write a ratio for it. This area unknown is to 240 as 9 is to 16. Let's write that down. So x is to 240 as 9 is to 16. And we, well, we spent a whole chapter on this a um, few months ago, but we'll just go through the old-fashioned uh, cross-multiplying, and we'll work through it, and you can see that our x, our unknown area, our un unknown area is 135 square centimeters. And it does make sense. Um, I mean, this is the smaller of the two figures. At least we, we did it in the correct direction. Works out OK. Well, let's put our new theorem to work to find the ratio of the areas of the red to the blue figure. And also, we'll figure out from that, we'll apply that proportion and find the area of the blue figure. And it should be stated that these are similar figures. You'd have to have that given. The tick marks just tell us that they are both parallelograms. But they're similar figures, so they're similar parallelograms. We just learned in a previous, or just learned seconds ago, that the ratio of the areas is the square of the ratios of the corresponding sides. Um, interestingly enough, 5 and 3 they're not really sides per se, but you could say they're components or the altitudes of these or heights of these particular figures. And that'll work the same as if it were the actual sides that correspond. So um, let's, let's see what we can do with this. The ratio of the sides is 5 to 3. And again, 5 to 3 happen to be the altitudes. So if I want to find the ratio of the areas, it's going to be the squares. 5 squared, 25. 3 squared, 9. So the ratio of the areas, 25 parts to 9 parts. And that's going to be sufficient for us to answer this question. So let's, um, let's, let's clean that up a little bit. And we're going to write down this little proportion. Because this area, the red area, 40, is to x, the blue area, as 25 is to 9. Again, the squares of the corresponding sides. So if we just, if 
Let's see if, um, I suppose you already know how to solve a proportion, but we'll just step through it anyway just to show how it's done. In this case, you know, we could use similar, uh, well, we'll just cross multiply. It'll be quick. And working right through that, and we come up with an area there of 14 and 4 tenths square yards. And usually what we'll do is we'll, we'll just work with the numbers, and then we'll, we'll put the units on at the end, and we're done. Well, here we're given the ratio of the areas of two polygons, but we don't get a picture. Hmm. And we want to find the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides. But, you know, it's a good time to make a picture so we can appreciate this. Now, they could be any shapes, but if I was going to describe this 16 to 121, nothing really demonstrates this quite like classic squares. And if you took the time, you could count 16 wee squares in here and 121 in here. And if you remembered your squaring tables, um, well, like I asked you to a few chapters ago, you would recall that 16 is 4 squared, 121 is 11 squared. In other words, we'll take the positive or principal roots of those two numbers and therefore the ratio of the corresponding sides. 4 to 11. So let's relive the previous problem with a different set of numbers. A ratio of areas 121 to 144 and again just to help you visualize you recognize both of those as perfect squares and of course they are the squares of 11 and 12 respectively and therefore the ratio of the sides would be 11 to 12. This would work again for any shape we're just demonstrating it with squares.